basically, I'm Srikant. Uh, some of us know each other. Um, I work for ActiveSphere. Um, I'm going to talk about um, Node.js programming patterns. I know we, you probably had an overload of uh, Node.js earlier, but um, I'll try keeping it not really basic. I hope you know all the basics, uh, but a little bit ahead of that, uh, some of the issues we had when we started playing with Node.js. Um, who am I? Uh, mostly do Ruby. Uh, sometimes I kind of uh, double with uh, Node.js. Uh, in in one of those uh, like uh, long hack nights, we basically built this thing called Active Node, which I kind of talk about uh, some point in time. Um, yeah. Uh, so I do a lot of small uh, Node.js projects. Have you have you used Redpack earlier? Like it's a Redis. Uh, anybody? Okay. So only I'm the only guy. So uh, Redback is a Redis uh, data structure provider sort of thing. And you, everybody knows Redis? OK, how many? Oh, cool. That's awesome. Awesome. So there is also a bunch of Redis slash, I mean, like I'm going to assume certain things. So so bear with me. If you, if you have uh, questions or something, uh, just ask me. Um, so basically, this is about patterns we learned on a bunch of small slash large projects. Uh, well, sort of, we'll come to that. Uh, so, so uh, questions about questions, it's really uh, hard to answer some things that don't have context. So ask me right away, stop me. Uh, if if uh, it's not relevant or if I don't know the answers, I probably say, sorry, I don't know, and time out the conversation. But uh, ask the questions right away. Um, so mostly I'll be skipping the Node.js basics. It's pretty hot here. Um, um, but like I think it's a question that's been asked uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, why Node? Um, have you been convinced about the node argument? Anybody who's not convinced or who still on the uh, borderline sort of thing? <laughs> okay, so so all web apps. I do web apps. I mean, I hardly ever do uh, anything else. All web apps are IO bound. Uh, deal with it. I mean, like it's it's like a cardinal rule. I use everything that you do. Talking to the database, file access. Every time you talk to MySQL, it's IO. Every time you're reading a config file, it's file IO. Uh, DNS, looking up your name to host, uh, IP resolution is, even express, require express is, uh, is blocking. Anyway, there's a require async which, which does that, but uh, general thumb rule, this is not, this is not some random statistic I kind of made up. Uh, this is, uh, this is reality. Um, this is observing a lot of things and there are lots of papers that talk about uh, uh, how, what CPU gets actually utilized. If you look at your uptimes on your servers, like at least I run a bunch of uh, big uh, apps, and I haven't seen more than like 10%, 10% of CPU. Um, so basically, that means 90% of your time is basically waiting for I.O. Returning data, passing the data, stuff like that is basically where your time is being spent. That sucks. That sucks big, big time because you're just using 10% of your beefy server, which you're paying like um, $1 an hour sort of thing on Amazon. But anyway, it sucks to actually use 10% of your brain power as well. So, so the only way forward is, can you see it? No. OK. Uh, yeah, like, like somebody else said, I think the fonts on my machine look much better than on this. So anyway. Um, um, so, so basically. If you want to scale your servers, basically you have to use non-blocking. There's no so Google Google actually targets Google in its data center targets 80% uh, CPU utilization, like like from 10 to 80 is like a big big jump. But but the only way you can do it is not by using blocking calls in Ruby or Rails or or whatever. So 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 there is a big big uh, move towards anybody who's doing high perform performance uh, uh, apps. Basically, is moving towards non-blocking, whether it's uh, Ruby Event Machine or um, or Node.js. So this this is an interesting tweet uh, that somebody else mentioned uh, in one of the other sessions. Basically, LinkedIn went from 15. So this is uh, if you read this, it's uh, it's their uh, LinkedIn uh, mobile app site. Basically, they it was running Rails. They had 16 instances, and they slide, they just replaced it with Node.js, and they basically could handle 2x load with just four instances, like reduce the instances by four times and increase the bandwidth throughput by two times. That's that's like the things that we are seeing. Um, 
and and I mean this is not like um, I mean there's always FUD and like uh, hype associated with these things, but we are seeing that on our servers as well. I mean when we we kind of we kind of had uh, nginx just fronting some of our static content, and we saw well nginx is actually really good nginx. Uh, um, uh, release. It, it's also a, a reactor pattern, so it's actually quite fast. But we could actually do a lot more, like in a 1.5 times more than with Node.js than with just plain Nginx. So, so it's it's really interesting. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm a Ruby dev. How many of you are Ruby? Like do Ruby or play with Ruby? Okay, not much. Uh, Python. Wow. Okay. So I have no idea about Python. I I only know uh, enough from CoffeeScript to translate to Python, but I have no idea. But I, I guess uh, Event Machine is basically, Event Machine has some history behind uh, that comes from Twisted. So Ruby has Event Machine, Python has Twisted, and uh, obviously JavaScript has Node. Um, the, so I'm, I'm just going to talk about Ruby, actually, uh, because I don't know much about Twisted to talk about. Ruby, um, not all gems are blocking, I mean, like, uh, non-blocking. So, so if you want to make uh, a HTTP request, you can't just take a REST client and say REST client .get something in an event loop. Um, because, because that sucks, because uh, if a reactor has blocking bits, then it's not scaling anymore. It's still blocking. So, so the only alternative is to use uh, a EM understanding stuff, like an EM HTTP request, or sort of do an EM differ, which is uh, both of them kind of hacky, you have to replace a lot of code. Um, anyway, it's not, it's not really uh, built to do that stuff, uh, or that's my, that's my opinion. I'm, I'm, I think a lot of people will disagree with that, but that's fine. Um, so, so nodes, pretty much, to me, it seems like the obvious choice. But there's, uh, ha has anybody seen this earlier? This is the classic XKCD about, uh, about learning curves. Like, like the, like the Emacs is really interesting because I don't understand what that means. <laughs> um, uh, anybody uses Emacs? Like, well, I use a little bit, but uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so this is my version of um, learning curves. Um, Ruby is very nice and easy. Like, user beginners can start off very easily. Then they hit the curve where, uh, like, they start following conventions and like. Um, and they go to the next one, then they start metaprogramming, and it's all nice. C++, it's like every, time, every day you learn something new. Anyway, um, get to, get to Node.js. Um, I don't really understand. Like, like, really, it's just confusing uh, async programming, right? Um, it's really, really, like, b basically that's a fuzzy mess there. Um, okay, I'm going to take a short detour. Can, yeah, it's, it's really bad. Um, so we, 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 we did, uh, me and Neela sitting here, we, we sort of uh, participated in this thing called Node Knockout. Anybody know about Node Knockout? Okay. Some people, yeah, cool. So, so basically, it's a 48 hour hacking contest. Basically, you write some application in 48 hours. Basically, don't sleep, do whatever you want, just finish it in, in, um, in that time, like 29th August. And so, so we built this uh, thing called Active Node. I'll just sh sort of show some pictures of it. Um, basically, it's a monitoring application. You sort of uh, has anybody heard of uh, New Relic, Ruby, Ruby guys? Yeah. So uh, it's, I mean, it's sort of trying to do New Relic, uh, except because Node is so async and like very uh, dynamic, we want to do really real time, really, really real time. Um, so basically, you just do that in your code, and like it, it just does magic, like almost real time magic, monitoring what's going on with your website, what kind of browsers connect to you, what are the slowest bits. It's still not there yet. I mean, it's still in the work. Uh, we don't know what we are going to do with that. Maybe, maybe release it at some point in time. But yeah, we, we'll see. We, we're not really sure about that right now. Um, but yeah, some of the learning is basically from Active Note. Um, like when you compress so much learning in uh, 48 hours, for example, right? When you have to get stuff done and you're learning certain things, you you sort of remember it. You just don't like forget it, even if you hacked it in the night and in half a sleep sort of form. So, so uh, this is another um, tweet that I, I saw recently. Um, like, it's, it's really funny, but um, it's also true. I mean, it's funny because it's true. Does, can, can somebody, can people relate to that? Because I definitely relate to it. I mean, like, like I do, I do all tested, everything nicely written Ruby, but when it comes to JavaScript, I'm like, oh, WTF. 
right i mean, like I'm, i'm i'm sure some people agree with me on that it's just not intuitive i mean like javascript like there's so many gotchas that you don't um so this is uh, pitluga so uh, pitluga is a, a ex colleague of ours uh, uh, and he he tweeted about this basically says like they they also do a biggish uh, node system uh, which is like a payment gateway um, so basically it says um, it creates unmaintainable soup yes no um, i think there are some patterns that you deal with to, to you start uh, using some of them are like just about getting your domain models right and your abstractions right so i'm, I'm going to talk about some of that that's basically i'm what i'm trying to get to um, i think programming not intuitive it's just uh, but but if you want high performance like just with like just with like you get so much power with node you have to just take that responsibility and say yeah deal with it and do something else with it i mean like so one one thing i tend to do is like one at a time and then the first one i'm trying to target is basically um, use coffee script period like there was this session i think in the other room about coffee script he was like not equivocal about it just just do it just just use coffee script if you're starting a new project just use coffee script don't bother about javascript like i mean it doesn't mean you don't understand javascript i mean like coffee script needs you to understand the innards of javascript like what a good and what a bad but but just don't bother about writing coffee i mean javascript um it's got all the good parts no curly braces no functions or whatever and it's re really easy to read and i think i think it really generates much nicer javascript code than i can write like I'm, i i don't consider myself like the alpha javascript writer but like i i, I do okay but uh, still i think it's uh, really nice um if you have old projects then i think my recommended path is not to do that uh, uh, converter thing because it sucks it won't work um just basically start all your new code with uh, coffee script keep your old javascript code do this fancy require coffee script and write everything in coffee basically what it does is it hooks into node js and says um, um basically re registers an extension and says anything that has coffee script as coffee dot coffee associated compile it um and it does it automatically so all this stuff is uh, really coffee files i'll probably show some of so yes and no if you do so what i tend to do i think i, th I sort of recommend it um uh, it's hard it's with coffee script it's kind of hard to uh, find errors especially when you do that uh, thing i'm recommending so what i tend to do in my development environment is just compile it and use the uh, because if it sees a javascript file so if i say if i see a host.coffee and if i see a host.js it'll preempt the javascript so it'll load the javascript up front and not do the coffee so so in my debugging compilation like development time i tend to compile it and then use the uh, js and not check the js in so so yeah, that that works as well uh, but yeah it's it's this this is a caveat though i mean there's no as lo as long as i think v8 doesn't support natively coffee script we'll still have to deal with it I and mean, like it's uh, i don't know if there is a better solution uh, uh, to that so so i'm i'm just going to sort of take a step ahead and say so th there's there's a small problem we had with um, so so we embed our application in somebody else's node js code and it's sitting there monitoring stuff doing cron jobs to publish information about what your cpu usage is what your memory usage is and stuff like that uh, so so there's a small daemon that we call um, tracker that runs so this is how i first implemented so by, by the way i mean like there's a lot of code coming in front so uh, danger ahead so this is my first implementation this is really my first implementation um so one good thing i did was basically didn't write it in line in that uh, in that uh, monitor itself but actually abstracted this thing called host info and like had a method called info that's a, that's the only good thing that i can say of this code right i mean anything else that you can see good here probably not um so so this is the nature of uh, the beast i mean this is uh, this is the callback mess that we talk about right um so so the so one the api is actually quite bad the api that i tend um, that i use sorry i'm going to have to drop it um the api that i use basically says it's this is api info.node.get uh, version takes takes a result, like basically calls a callback that is that has a result in it um 
and basically that's the result for Git version. Oh, by the way, this is CoffeeScript, so uh, so you have to sort of understand CoffeeScript a little bit. Sorry, I, I didn't warn you earlier, this is CoffeeScript. This is not JavaScript. Uh, so basically what it's saying is, take a callback, take a callback which does this, this rest of the graph. And ditto, it's like every time you see that arrow, basically that's sort of a callback. Um, I'm sorry? With the result as an argument. So basically the pattern is pretty consistent, so you just have to look in the top. But, uh, and then it st starts sticking that information into the data. Clear? Everybody seems to me happen? Yes, maybe. So, so the, 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 the requirement here is basically I can't, I can't make callbacks to my server to post this information. Like every, oh, get environment post to the server, get version post to the server, get memory usage post to the server. I want to I want to get all that information and then post because that's really horrible. If I if I get 15 requests like this in like one second, I'm screwed. My server is going to go down. Um, so basically, the idea is collect all the information and then call this callback right at the bottom, right? This is this is the guy who's doing major chunk of it. Clear, right? And yeah. So this is this is how it gets uh, twisty. I don't think anybody understands this code. This, yeah, I don't claim to write this code, but yeah, that's fine. Um, and everybody can see this code, right? I mean, it's not like really cool. Uh, so this is the second, but com less complicated version. Uh, basically, I abstracted that away into a bunch of system calls, um, uh, and basically do a call. Apply your call doesn't matter what it is with uh, this thing, and then do a callback. Anybody see any issues with this code? This is like a classic noob JavaScripter, right? I mean, this is this won't work. This doesn't work. I mean, this is totally wrong. Uh, this is my classic noob mistake. So, because it's async, this responses come back much later. And this callback is called with uh, empty data. So I'm basically seeing no data at all. Um, and this is again the asynchronous nature of the piece. You just can't call the callback before uh, getting all the data. The, the interesting thing though is, if you, if you go debug or something, you'll see the data in like two seconds later. It's there. But what was posted to the server wasn't, was empty. Like very subtle, very stupid bugs. Uh, Yeah, so so my uh, this is my favorite part of the slide, by the way. Just when in doubt, hack. So hack another version of it. Um, by the way, the uh, I don't know whether I showed underscore. Yeah, basically that underscore is underscore dot js. I, I guess everybody knows that. So I'm just yeah. So my second version. Basically, it's slightly more complicated. But does the right thing. It works. It works because uh, because I'm doing a count. Basically, this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So so basically, this is trying to synchronize certain operations basically saying every time you get the result call back here and there I basically decrement a count and if I see that count is less than this this whole thing I'm done right am I making any sense at all no maybe yeah, yeah. so so uh, this is like uh, the, this is almost like a classic pattern in um, in asynchronous art, uh, like asynchronous design you you see this in event machine you see this in uh, Node.js, you probably see it in Twisted as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. So so this is um, so basically count the pending. There are it's it's kind of complicated. This is really simple because I just want the hash, right? I mean, if you if there are uh, if you want to sequence these operations, as in Node get environment should run first, and then get prefix, and then get version, then then it's tricky. Then then. You basically have to see, uh, basically have to clone the array and do stuff. So, so maybe it's a, a reader exercise to sort of do the sequenced version of this. Um, there are other ways of doing it. Uh, next tick is another way. Basically, you, instead of doing the callback, you basically say, 
in the next tick, when the next reactive loop runs, uh, ex uh, schedule this get version or the next method. So basically, uh, pop off the array and basically uh, schedule methods. So that's that's one uh, version of it. So so as you can see, like basically, there's there's stuff happening in parallel. There's stuff happening in sequence. Uh, like the collection and sending to the Redis server or to the server is needs to be sequenced after all the parallel calls have run. So so you see this pattern a couple of times, and then and a new flow control thing is run. I mean, like I, I create another flow control module. Basically, abstract this away into some, some sort of uh, looping mechanism, right? And that's why they're like, um, I think I did a WC minus L for this, and uh, I got like 40 flow control modules, which, which do async Node.js stuff. So, so basically, drop that idea right away. Uh, don't do a new async module for yourself. Understand the plumbing. But and scratch whatever I said and just use this thing called seek. Right? Have you, has anybody used seek? Well, uh, so I'll show you the code again. Um, yeah, there are like like I said, there are 40-ish uh, async modules that that run. Yeah, you just do a require seek. So it's really simple. Um, back again, dropping it. So it's uh, really simple. You basically say wrap my both execution flow in, in this thing called sequence. Power each is basically parallel. Run all these parts in parallel. Don't bother about uh, when they run. Uh, how does, sorry, what, no, I don't. If you want to remove these APIs, right? How does the order matter? The exact order of this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is this callback should be called at the end of all of this. So yeah. So so that's why I say it's all this should be parallel. I don't care about the order of execution. It's just this. So parallelize all of this, sequence this one. Like, so what it does, it's it's quite uh, interesting because uh, it sort of creates a stack of all the use, uh, results that each gets. Um, and, and and it stores it in this thing called this sort of So so yeah. So basically, it's really. I mean, at, at the, looking at this code, this this is really intuitive. I mean, it's, there's no counter business. There's no uh, so magic. Is it like that reduce concept uh, pretty much that can be like all the codes uh, pretty much can have the same sort of concept here. Like you, you can have those math class into this and have that. You can actually. So, so this is. Well, well, so I, I would not think of it as map reduce. I mean, you can do maps and reduces and everything here itself. But there's a method called uh, uh, reduce, which will reduce the uh, yeah results basically. But yeah, I would not. Uh, there's no. I don't think there's a correlation with uh, the couch map reduce or map reduce. This is basically almost like iteration. This is iterating certain things, waiting for certain things to happen, and then. Uh, yeah, so, so, so I think one of the uh, other things that you could do, like I gave the next tick pattern, right? Actually, recursion is another way of doing it. I mean, this is like we, uh, for, uh, this is like a Ruby programmer doing what is this programmer writing. Yeah. Yeah, so the, see, so the other thing you see is this catch error. Uh, basically, this takes care of your uh, uh, stack issues around, uh, like if you, if you have an error in uh, Node.js, basically it will crash out or you'll have to handle it separately. But what, what this do, does is it lets you handle each exception at the right place and and, and handle whatever per, per uh, usage sort of thing. So so basically it builds exception handling in as well. So I think like all the code probably is over now. So a uh, question, like why is there a catch error is in this pattern space, what happens? Yes, so, so all the parallel ones continue. Anything that is parallel will continue, will not, there's no um, break or something. But the, say a couple of them change and get a couple of errors. Yes. And yes, so, so if you, you basically can choose to throw out, I mean, like say, raise from here and say, I don't want to deal with this at all. You can also say, uh, move your catch. This is like a catch all everything. Uh, you could move your uh, catch to somewhere here. Or sorry, uh, just before sec, 
and say, I only want to deal with this catch applies only for this parallel request and not for this sequential request. But this catch will apply for everything that uh, it gets executed. If parallel execution fails, just sequential execution? Yes, unless you uh, you throw it, or, like you deal with it. This this basically means I'm eating it away, and uh, I, I'm not doing anything. I'm just logging it. So sequential will happen with with some random junk data or bad data. Cool. Oh yeah. So, so the other pattern. I mean, I think a lot of. Uh, so I'm I'm not a big uh, uh, client side developer, so I don't do a lot of UI, jQuery sort of thing. But I've done enough jQuery to know. Like this is a, a classic uh, jQuery pattern in that sense. Basically, you just emit. Like when you don't want to deal with certain things, you just emit. Somebody else catches. Uh, basically, you just trigger a event, and like somebody else uh, handles it somewhere else. It's also like a classic way of. Uh, abstracting your code away, like as in breaking it into multiple modules. So so in Node, it's called event emitter. Uh, everybody can see the code? Yeah. OK, cool. So, uh, so basically, you do all the uh, boilerplate stuff to say set, set up your uh, event monitor. And basically, you say, I could, basically, I could have run all the spaghetti here and like do um, if remote address is this, do this and that and that and so on, right? But basically, I chose to say this is not the right place to handle. This is just a controller. This is not the place to handle all the request stuff. I'll I'll push it somewhere else to deal with it. And somewhere else, there's a code that says controller dot on request do this, right? It just it's this is this is to me this is uh, one pattern that I use to break out of uh, this that wiry nested loops, nested callback mess. Um, obviously, it's uh, it's useful to modularize your application as well. So, 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 I mean, if if you take one thing away from this, basically, it's it's like the constructs may be different, but the way you uh, design your node node application is exactly the same as you design your Ruby application or anything else. Uh, ba basically, think of the abstractions and abstract it away. The implementation may be different. Different by maybe using event emitter or maybe using um, like sec or flow execute flow control sort of thing, but get to the right abstractions and you don't have to worry about it. It's it's really that simple. Um, so 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 this was an example of internal sort of uh, sort of uh, eventing. So basically, we are saying the node application itself uh, talks to parts of the comp component inside the node. But you could, and and we use it. Uh, we use Redis in the background, backend to sort of store all the information, um, and we event with uh, Redis. Uh, well, we don't use PubSub. PubSub is a really cool way of doing it as well. But uh, uh, but we use the monitor. Monit has anybody used the monitor on Redis? Basically, you, you say you register a monitor and say um, send me everything that's coming to the database. Like any change that happens to the database, give it to me, and and I think the code sort of was here. So basically, you say on monitor, just give me all the stuff. So basically, as somebody else is writing data to Redis, I'm I'm sort of streaming that into uh, into this this part of the code. And all it does basically is uh, is like pipe this data to socket IO, like right to the browser. So it's not it's not uh, it's not even like understanding what data it is. It just takes that data, pipes it into socket IO. Um, yeah. Um, so, so it's sort of a note, I think. Um, like when you when you start working with Node, there are there are lots of options. I could I could we could choose to use uh, MySQL, for instance. But personally, I think uh, it's it's not evented in that sense. You, you tend to choose architectures that are um, that are evented. Like change happens, I got a node. Like you don't want to put a loop around uh, or a polling thing that says, oh, up, if check for keep checking for updates from MySQL and if something happens, do this sort of thing. So, so prefer architectures that are evented, like, and that's that's why uh, like Redis kind of fit in for us. CouchDB has a similar uh, infrastructure in that sense. Basically, it has underscore changes which uh, which lets you feed into uh, like see what the changes are, pretty much real time. So. So for me, uh, and this is my personal opinion, I, I don't know whether people will agree to it. But basically, uh, it's definitely, I mean, like, when you're using Node, think about what 
tools you're using along with it. I mean, you can't just uh, take a 18th century thing and like stick it along with Node. Maybe, maybe MySQL is not, but um, yeah, fine. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, so one thing to do uh, to also understand is like uh, common JS, like know what how to use common JS modules. There, there are a couple of patterns. I mean, that's they're really simple. I'm just throwing it out so that you know uh, how to do it. Like this is uh, this is how you require uh, Active Node, um, and it just exports one method called Request Tracker. That's about it. Right? And this is this is okay if you if you're using um, like one or two methods when you're exposing one or two methods. By the way, people know this. Uh, do you, does everybody know what common JS is? No. Okay. Okay. Common JS is like this common uh, abstraction for all the JavaScript servers in that sense. So there are a lot of people who support this. And this, uh, uh, hang on, modules.exports is basically a common JS uh, directive. Um, there are a bunch of uh, common tools that they're intending to expose. I don't know whether it's it's what shape it is in, but node um, kind of half-heartedly accepts it. I, I know uh, Ryan has like a big issue with it, but but fine. Um, so it's yeah, it's good. Um, ex when you're exposing a whole bunch of methods like objects and stuff, uh, use the use this sort of syntax. Like yeah, I'm, I'm sort of. So so the other thing that we uh, tend to run with uh, run into was node memory issues. Have, has anybody dealt with node memory issues at all? I mean, how many use uh, socket IO? Okay. Yeah, socket IO is known to be a big leak. So node. Um, uh, so I don't know. This is I'm trying to make a controversial statement here, but uh, um, having the closures and not understanding when things go out of scope leads to a lot of memory leaks. I mean, that's what my uh, personal view is. I don't know whether like all the hardcore JavaScript guys agree to it. But Node.js has some issues. Socket IO definitely. Like we we uh, we just ran Socket IO just uh, like and in four days I think it just crashed uh, running out of memory without without doing anything without actually even publishing an event. Um, anybody use Node Inspector? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's I think this is my best bet with uh, I, I so personally I don't um, debug uh, Node too much. But when I'm running into memory issues, and uh, like sometimes once in a while I do, so it gives you like a nice. Uh, this is Chrome. It probably works with Chrome and uh, Safari. Yeah. Uh, so so you put breakpoints. You can just sort of step in, step out, look at call stack, and uh, and yeah, lots of lots of you can do lots of things with it. But basically. It lets you see what what uh, what's on your call stack, what's lying around, stuff like that. So do that do that really early because uh, because we we've seen this over and over again with uh, with Node like it just runs out of memory and like dies. Like my status so, so there's this uh, status dashboard thing I work on, and which is looking at my production servers and saying um, whether this is up and this is up and this is up. But like in a few days it dies. Like I don't even know. Which one to monitor with, what with? So, so it's kind of funny. Like my status dashboard keeps dying, and and most of the culprit is actually socket IO. Uh, I can't sort of blame Node, but uh, but keep keep watching that. Um, deploy early. I mean, this is like going into that uh, agile stuff. Um, each platform has its own idiosyncrasy. Like so, in, when we were doing Active Node, we sort of uh, went to Node.d, which is a joint node, and web sockets didn't work. Uh, some of our IP resolution stuff didn't work, and like we said, no, we can't use Node IO, like sorry, Node D, and like we went to Joint, uh, and Joint half of the other stuff didn't work, and like we went, we we didn't know what to do. So at some like some late night uh, debugging sort of helped us to fix it, but uh, we went back to Node by the way, N O D. Yeah, web sockets and socket IO is like pretty much like all the socket IO needs all these. Um, Ports to be open and like it, it, it works. But it if if it starts falling back on long polling, so everybody knows what uh, socket IO is, right? It's like uh, um, real time updates, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so so it it will fall back to long polling if it can't find the ports open, or or if it's not Chrome, for example, or when WebSockets is not uh, turned up. 
Um, so, so if it's long polling, basically you're screwed. So don't bother about long polling and socket handling. So, so, uh, so if you debug these issues right away, uh, it will be useful. Um, sort of winding down now. Um, so use uh, use the deployment uh, node hosting sites. Don't deploy on your own. It's pretty pretty basic right now. Like if uh, even node node guys say don't front it with nginx. Don't don't uh, just use the node.js HTTP server because it's still still not really complete. So don't don't bother about front uh, fronting with nginx. Uh, like doing it on your own. Like like node crashes all the time. Like because if you don't do the right exception handling, it'll crash. We'll need somebody to restart it when you um, when it dies. So maybe Nginx, maybe uh, these guys are really good. So so yeah, just pick one of them and stick with them. Okay, that's pretty much the end of it. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So so if you have any questions, it was like too high or too low. Sorry. <laughs> okay. What does your company do? Oh, okay. We are uh, we are into uh, consulting mostly Ruby. It's like I think 90% of our work is Ruby. Um, I mean, Ruby means JavaScript and everything else. Uh, and we choose to do Node.js when we can. Basically, that's uh, uh, um, yeah. Is development device? So so yeah, uh, we work with Peak. We didn't we didn't actually do it. Yeah, we work with Peak to develop that. So mostly our customers tend to be like early startups and uh, uh, yeah. Cool. Thanks.